In this video, I'm gonna take you from beginner to having the knowledge to start crafting your very own first video in Adobe Premiere Pro. We're also gonna be utilizing important tips and tricks that I learned throughout the past 15 years editing video. So you know it's gonna be good, let's go. Okay, once you've launched Premiere, you're gonna see this window here. We're gonna click new project. And in this window, we can actually import some of our footage, but I don't recommend doing it that way. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna go up here, name our project. I like to use a date tag and let's use the new year as an example. Example. So 2024-January 1st, and we'll call this test project. Next, you can choose your project location. Now you could save this file on your computer. I recommend an external hard drive, but what's most important is staying organized. And to do that, I actually created a folder structure for you guys. So let's take a quick look at it. So I created this basic folder structure for you guys so that you can keep things organized. I recommend doing this for all projects. Now I have a more in-depth version of this folder structure that I use for most of my projects. If you guys would like a copy of my personal structure, let me know in the comments below. And if enough of you guys ask, I can update the description to this video below with a digital download of my folder structure that you can just copy and paste and start your projects off the right way each time. So looking through this quickly, we have our project footage, we have our music and sound effects, graphics, we have stock footage, and we have scratch disks. I'm gonna show you what those are in a second. But inside this project folder is where we want to save our project, which is what we're doing now inside of Premiere. So under project location, I'm gonna to go to choose location and I'm gonna save this in the project folder. And then I'm gonna hit okay. Now let's take a quick tour of Premiere's interface. So right here on the right hand side, we have our program monitor. We have our source monitor here on the left. We have our project panel right here in the bottom left hand corner, our tools. We have our timeline and we have our audio meters. Also, if you want to maximize any one of these screens, just hover over them with your mouse, hit the tilde key, and you can actually maximize any one of these windows. Now, really quick, we want to talk about scratch disks. If we go up to File, Project Settings, Scratch Disks, scratch disks are where Premiere saves a bunch of different files related to your project. And so in our folder structure before, we created our scratch disks folder, and we want to make sure these are set to that folder because over time, if these are set in a random place, all these video previews, audio previews, previews that Premiere makes, which are just basically files that help Premiere run faster, will end up taking up space on your computer and filling it up quickly. So we'll set this to our scratch disks folder, hit OK. And then now once you set the top one, it'll automatically know for the next ones, you can just hit browse, enter, browse, enter. And those are set. Now I know you guys want to get into importing your footage, cutting it down and making some sick videos, but you guessed it. We need to keep our project organized just like we kept it organized on our hard drive on our computer. Because imagine you have, for example, hundreds of sound effects, a bunch of different songs, a bunch of different video clips. You're going to have a hard time finding that stuff in the future. So right here on the left hand side in our project window, we can create a new bin. And there's two ways to do that. We can either right click and go new bin or we can click in this bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm gonna follow the folder structure that we followed in the beginning. The only difference being is that the first folder, instead of our project, which was our save location, I'm gonna call this sequences. Sequences are just like edits. You could have multiple edits inside of Premiere, but Premiere calls your edit a sequence. And the rest of these bins are gonna be exactly the same as we created on our folder on our computer. So I'm gonna quickly create those now. All right, now that we have our bins created for all of our assets, we can go ahead and start importing some assets, importing that footage so we can make some sweet videos. So I'm gonna click here on my footage bin, double clicking on it, we'll open it up, and then we can import files two ways. You can click and drag your clips right into the project, like so, or you can right click anywhere in an empty space in this bin. You can right click, you can import, we can go to our footage that we have saved and we can import our clips. I'm gonna hold shift so I can select both of them and I'm gonna import our footage. Now for our example, I also have some drone footage. So I'm gonna create a folder called drone and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna import our sweet drone shots. Also, we can click on this little button here to go back. So we'll go back. So now you can see we have our footage nice and organized here. Uh, we could even go farther as to name this like ACAM card one. 
put this in our footage folder and put our A camera footage there. Maybe not necessary for every single project, but it's good to know. Next step, what we need to do is create a sequence inside of Premiere that we can actually do our editing within. So we're going to click right here in any blank space in our project window, click new item and sequence. Now you can select any of these preset settings if you know exactly what camera you're shooting on and resolution. But for our examples, I know that we're gonna do 4K Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160 pixels. And I know that for most projects, you're gonna wanna have 23.976 frames per second, unless you have some sort of other reasoning for having a different time code. This is standard. We could also name this. So I'm gonna call this rough edit and then click okay. Now, before we go through what just happened, I'm gonna put this in my sequences folder. So see how organized we're saying? We have our footage, we have our rough edit, and we have folders for any other assets that we need. So what just happened is we created a sequence inside of Premiere. If you click up here on this playhead, you can actually drag forward and you can see the time code in the left-hand corner changing. Now, this is at the time at which you were at in your edit. So this is zero seconds. That's six minutes, 14 seconds, and 18 frames, right? We also have some tracks here. Underneath this line, we have our audio tracks. So we have audio one, two, three, and four. We also have some video tracks, video one, two, three, and four. These layers work the same as Photoshop if you've ever used Photoshop. So whatever the top layer is, is what's gonna be shown. If you have a clip underneath on video track two, for example, underneath a clip on video track three, what's gonna be shown is whatever is on video track three. Now that we've created our sequence, we can actually start bringing our footage into our timeline and start doing some editing. So to do that, we have two options here. We could go to our footage, double click on our clip. Now for this example, I just have some footage from a real estate video I shot a while back, but I think this is a great example for any type of project because this video has both a talking segment and it has beauty shots. So maybe you're just doing visuals to music, that's okay, this will still be applicable. Or if you have a YouTube video or any other type of video where someone's talking throughout the video, this example is gonna help out great with that. So again, we double clicked on our clip and it opened it up here in our source panel, right? Our source panel is like a preview for our footage. It just shows you your clip, but it's not actually in our edit yet. Now we can use this little playhead here and we can actually scrub through our clip and see our entire clip. This is just a talking segment that I had for a video, but we're gonna do a little bit of editing before we even get the footage into our timeline because I can see that she doesn't start talking until right about here. So I can hit I on my keyboard or I can use this to mark in. I can scrub forward through my clip and I can see that she stops talking or the, maybe there was a mistake in the line right about here. We can then click and drag that into the timeline. And we've done a little bit of pre-editing on our clip beforehand. Now this method can be a little bit time consuming. So let me show you another way to import your footage into your timeline. The next way we can import clips into our timeline, we can just simply click on our first clip that we want in our timeline. We can hold shift and click on the second clip I want in my timeline and we can click and drag them. And now as you can see, this is still including all of that dead space in our clip, the mistake, a bunch of stuff that we need to cut out. If you don't have any talking in your video, it's just visuals. You can use these same methods that I'm showing you now, but we're gonna get to some visuals also in a minute. Now we're gonna use some tools and some keyboard shortcuts to edit this footage down. To start off, if we hold shift and hit plus on our keyboard, we can expand our clips. Then we can kind of see what we're working with here. We can see a thumbnail of each one of the clips and we can also see our audio levels. Also, if you hit plus on the keyboard, and minus on the keyboard, you can zoom in and out. So the first way to trim down a clip is just by simply clicking on the clip and we can hover over the edge of the clip until this red icon appears and we can click and drag the clip to the right and cut off whatever we want. Now we just trimmed that clip and we trimmed a section off of it. Now, second option is we can actually hit C on the keyboard to bring up our cut tool, or you can hit the razor right here and this will splice the clip anywhere that we click. So since I have audio connected to my clip, I'm gonna hold shift, click, and that just makes sure that the cut goes all the way through all of the clips that I wanted cut. So if I hit V on my keyboard or go up here and hit the selection tool, I can select the crap that I don't want 
and we can do what's called a ripple delete and we can just select this dead space and hit the backspace key on our keyboard to move the clips right back to the beginning of our sequence. So now you can see we've cut this down. Now, if you have a video where there's a lot of talking, my recommendation is to go through and edit down all of your talking segments first. This is great because it keeps your edit organized and we can figure out our storyline before we start adding in music, before we start adding in any beauty shots or shots supporting what you're explaining about, text, all that stuff. If we get our story nailed down first, we're gonna be in a really good place. So just for example, let's say we've played through this clip and we identified a section that we want to cut out. We can hit C on our keyboard again to bring up the cut tool. We can cut that out, hit V on our keyboard to bring up our selection tool and we can delete that clip and then we can select the dead space and delete it again. Now we've created a jump cut and we've cut out that section. Once you have your talking segment cut down or maybe this is your beauty shots or your visuals that you have, we can add some music. So I have some music in my folder already here. There's plenty of great places for royalty free music online. So I'm just gonna click and drag this into my music folder. Now we have our music here. We can double click on it and see our waveform. For this, my camera actually shot with four channels of audio and I don't need all these four channels of audio. For most examples, you have may have one or maybe two channels of audio. So I'm gonna fix that really quick. Chances are when you import your clip, this is what it's gonna look like. And if you wanna know what I just did, I selected all of the footage. I hit Command or Control L to unlink and then I deleted them. Okay, now we can click and drag in our music. For this example, again, I can tell there's a little bit of dead space in the beginning of our music, so I'm gonna trim that off so our beat starts right when our video starts. But we're gonna run into a bit of an issue here. Our music is gonna be really, really loud. So if we actually hit this S key right here, which solos your audio track, and we're not gonna hear any of our dialogue that we have on track one, I can hit the space bar to play, and you can see that this music is almost all the way near the top of our audio meters. The issue with that is we also have our vocals in here, which are way too low. If we kept it this way, you're not gonna be able to hear them talking. So we need to turn it down. So we can just click on this bar, drag it down, and turn down the audio. I can also hit the cut tool again and cut off the end. So now if we solo our music, we can see that our music is playing in the background. And we, if we add in our dialogue, our dialogue is louder than our music. But our talking portion of our video or our dialogue is still too quiet and it needs to be cleaned up a bit, so we're gonna do that next. Now I can select both of these audio clips. I can go Window and I can click on Essential Sound. This is gonna bring up our Essential Sound panel, which has a bunch of awesome tools to help us quickly clean up our audio. So we can click here and click Auto Match. And boom, as you can notice, the waveform on the clip just went way louder. If we click the space bar and play through, we can see that our vocals are in a much higher range, which is great. Nothing should be peaking. Let me just show you what peaking is though. If, it, if I turn up the clip all the way, see how it just went up in the red there? At that point, your audio has been destroyed for that section, so we want to avoid that. Next, we can do a bit of repair on the audio. Make sure you don't go too far with these. A little bit goes a long way, so we can just do a little bit of noise reduction. If we were inside, we could reduce the echo a little bit, which is reduce reverb, and I like to add a little bit of clarity to the clip. The repair tools are a little bit more touchy than the clarity, so you can boost this clarity up and it won't be too intense. So we have some music, we've cleaned up our audio, we've added in our clips, we've cut out some of the bad takes. Next, we wanna add in some B-roll shots or some additional shots so that we're not just stuck on one camera shot the whole time. So for our example, I have some drone shots that we're gonna use for this. So you can click on our drone shots. Also here in the bottom left-hand corner, we can click on icon view and we can actually see what we have here. Also, you can hover your mouse over the clip and you can scrub through the clip to get better idea of what the clip is. So for this, instead of clicking and dragging with all of, it's gonna be a massive clip, I'm actually gonna use our second method that we I showed you for importing footage. I'm gonna figure out where I want this clip to start. I'm gonna set an in point. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna set an out point. And with this little film icon here, we can actually click and drag this up onto our second track. If you watch, we can play our video. And she says, hey, welcome to 
this neighborhood. And when she says that, we have a shot of the neighborhood. The next step would just be to continue throughout your video, going through and picking out all of the stuff that you wanna add beauty shots. Because remember, we did our whole talking segment in the beginning of this video. So we are going to add all of these shots throughout the video. Just for our tutorial sake, I'm not gonna go through and create this entire video. We're just gonna pretend that the intro of this video is our video in its entirety. But the next thing I'm gonna show you is pretty fun. We can add some speed ramps to our B-roll or to our beauty shots or our visuals to really spruce them up. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna find a clip. I'm gonna set my in points and my out points. I'm gonna click and drag that clip onto the timeline. I'm gonna hit plus on the keyboard to zoom into the timeline. I can right click on this little effects icon Go to time remapping speed and you see how the line changed there now we have our speed adjustment so if i drag this up it's going to make the clip go a lot faster let's exaggerate it now the clip went really fast right but if we want to get really smooth with it instead of speeding up the whole clip we can hold command or control button hover over that line and we can add a key, what's called a keyframe for where we want our speed to change so i'm going to put it right here because I know at this point I want it to go back to normal speed. So I'm going to select what's before that keyframe, drag up that line to maybe 700%. And you can see what we just did is we just added a speed ramp to that, but it's a little bit jarring. So what we can do is we can actually hit plus on our keyboard, zoom in, and we can separate these handles out, which will make it more gradual. And as you can see, it's smoothed it out and we have a nice speed ramp shot. So we can drag this around, find a good spot for it. So if we want that to go there, then we want to do, let's say we want to put the house shot here. And then she's talking about the neighborhood. Then we want the neighborhood shot here. And you can kind of lay out all of these beauty shots in a way that makes sense with your story. Now let's say that you want to add some text to your video. Here in the tools, we can click the text tool and we can click here in our program window and we can say example. I can hit command or control A to select all of the text and go to, to window and go to essential graphics. And this is going to pull up all of our text tools. You also notice here in our sequence that it created a layer that has our text on it. So here it's going over two clips. So I'm just gonna shorten that down to the length of the clip that I want it over. And I can double click on this. I can go over here to our essential graphics. I can change things like the font. So we can change it to something bold, change our size up. We can also go up here to window and add our effects controls. I'm gonna click and drag this so it's in the same as my source panel. So it doesn't take up too much room on my screen. And with this clip selected, I now get all these properties as well. So I can move this left and right. I can move it down and up. I can scale it in and out. Also, you can click on the text properties here and have the same adjustments that we have here in our essential graphics window. I'm gonna reset all those things that I just did and stick within our essential graphics window. So I'm gonna use the center tool to center it. I'm gonna center it there again, scale it up, which messed up our center. So I'm gonna center it again. And now we have some text and that is adding text to your video if we go to window effects we get this window where we can add all of our effects you can go through these and mess around with all of these but for our example i know we want to use push which is kind of a fun one so that would be under video transitions slide push so i'm going to drag it to the beginning of our clip and you can see what happened is the text just came in now we can shorten this animation or make it longer so by shortening it comes in faster we can shorten it really short it'll come in way faster and we can also copy that by hitting command or control c and click on the edge of the clip near the end and we can paste it and it can continue going or we could even select the transition and go back up to our effects controls here and we could reverse the transition say for example i want it to come back the way it just came so it went out and it went back the same way now quickly, while we're on the topic of adding transitions, we can also add in fades or dissolves. So if we wanna add a fade in on a clip, the easiest way is to select the beginning of the clip, right click and go to apply default transition. And you can see that that clip's gonna fade in. We can shorten that transition 
and it can fade in nice and short. We can also, I'm going to delete that, we can also add something like a dip to black. So I can click on that transition, drag it. Now this one is going to go between two clips. So I'm going to drag it over the center of both clips and watch this is going to dip to black. So quick recap, we've cut down our story or we've cut down our beauty shots. If you did have a storyline, we then went and added beauty shots over the top of your storyline. We added music, we cleaned up our audio, we added some text and we added some transitions. And the next step before we render or export our video out into a file format that we could upload to YouTube or whatever platform you're going to upload it to, we need to color correct this video. All right, to get our color correction tools, we need to go up to Window, and we need to open up Lumetri Color. This is gonna add a panel on the right-hand side of your screen that has all of our color adjustments. So to add color correction to any clip, we need to hover over that clip, select it, and then our tools are enabled. So color correction is an art, and it takes a bit to fully understand how to properly color correct an image, but let's take a quick tour through these tools. Now right here on the top, we have our color temperature, the temperature of our clip. You can double click on it to send it back to the original setting. We have tint. We also have saturation, which is gonna in increase the vibrance or the color of the image. We also have our exposure, contrast, highlights, which is gonna do the bright parts of the image, shadows, which is gonna do the dark parts of the image, and then whites and blacks, which is gonna be the whitest white of the image and the darkest dark of the image. Like this is only adjusting the deepest blacks in the image. Where the shadows is adjusting the dark areas as well, but it's not the darkest of dark areas. Under our creative tab, we also have some LUTs we can add here. So these are like different looks that Adobe has pre-included, which are preset color corrected looks that you could add to your clip. You can also change the intensity of those. And then we're gonna skip past the rest of these tools because the principles are pretty in depth and it takes a lot to learn. So if you'd like a color correction specific tutorial, let me know. We also have a vignette, which is gonna chain, put a dark vignette around the edges. But what I think if you're just getting started out in Adobe Premiere and you need to color correct an image, the best way for you to go about it is to click this auto button up here. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna find a pretty good starting place for your color correction. So you don't have to do everything manually. And then you can kind of just adjust it from there. So that could work for this clip. And let's just quickly do this one as well so you can see another example. I can click auto and it's just, for that example, it did a great job. I mean, maybe you might wanna add a little bit of saturation or cool down the image a little bit, depending on how you want it to look but that did wonderful there. So again, for color correction, I think it's a great idea just to start off with the auto until you can learn a little bit deeper and really understand the principles of color correction and why you're doing what you're doing. If you have a bunch of clips that are very similar, you can also select your clip, go up to your effects controls, if you don't have this effects control window, you can go up to window effects controls and add it to your screen. And you can see that the Lumetri effect has been added here. You can copy that by hitting command or control C, and then you can paste it onto a different shot by hitting command V or control V. Some people may teach you to do adjustment layers, which is a different method, but I don't recommend doing it that way because you're gonna have clips that have been shot differently, different exposure, different looks. It's better to do each clip individually so everything looks great. Okay, now we've pretty much gone through most of the steps of creating an edit. We've shortened and cut a clip down, we've added music, we've mastered or mixed our audio, we've added text, we've done some color correction, we've done some transitions. Finally, it's time to render or what's called export our video out into a file type that we can upload to our YouTube, our Vimeo, our Instagram, TikTok, whatever you're doing. So to do that, what I like to do is go to the end of the edit, hit O on your keyboard, go to the beginning of your edit, hit I on your keyboard. So with that, we just selected what we want to render or export out into a video. Now we can go up to File, Export Media. Once we do that, we're gonna get this window. We can name our file name. So I'm just gonna call this test project rough edit. We can choose our file location by clicking right here. And then you can use a preset. And for most applications, you're probably gonna go with H.264 as your file format. We're just gonna drop down our video and make sure 
that this matches. So we created our sequence in Ultra HD 4K, which was 3840 by 2160. Our frame rate matches. We can click on this more. We can select render at maximum quality. And we can also go down here to our bitrate settings. So I like to use VBR 2 pass, which is just a little bit better of an export. And for YouTube, I know the bitrate is like 50 to 65. Um, you can search those on Google, but if you keep these pretty much for anything at 65 or 75, your video is going to look great. From there, we don't really need to do anything else. All of our settings are going to be great, except for right here for the range, we want to go to source in and out because we set those in points and out points of what we want to export. So we just need to tell the renderer that we want to render or export from in to out. Then we can just click export and Premiere is going to render out our video file. And once that's finished, we have our video all rendered out and ready to go. And that wraps up my essentials to getting started in Adobe Premiere Pro. As always, if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next video.